So do we come with specific intentions and sort of... Not so much, usually. You come knowing that you'll be able to figure it out as you go along and eager for it to be like that because that's delicious. Open-ended like and adventurous and free-flowing. And So we don't say, I want to come and marry someone who works at a Baskin Robbins and, that, you know, creates hot fudge sundaes so I can experience more hot fudge sundaes or... It's usually more like I want to come forth and interact with others who also understand that they are the creator of their own reality so that we can feel the full satisfaction of our full focus and attention in this life experience. I want to go forth, you're saying it from that vantage point, into the physical environment that I understand is the leading edge of thought because I like new, I understand that new is where it always is. Being the eternal being that I am, new is what always calls me forward. And so I accept the sameness of what is, but because of the enormous and perfect diversity in the sameness, there's a lot of sameness, but there's a lot of diversity in the sameness. There's a lot of what is, but there's a lot of diversity in the what is, which makes the sameness so diverse that there's a lot for me to choose from, which is essential to my motion forward. And so while I don't want to experience all of it, I accept the value of all of it and its functioning value in helping me to focus. So I go forth eagerly as consciousness into this sea of possibilities, loving the feeling of possibilities forming within me. And then when they do, me having the connection enough, the alignment enough to feel the continuity of it enough and the goodness of it enough that I can choose which aspects of all of this contrast that I want to moment by moment give my undivided attention to so that I can feel the energy that creates worlds pouring through my focus into new meaningful manifestations. Meaningful to me and meaningful in adding to the collective variety of the whole. And I do this because I remember and because I crave the thrill of this energy that creates worlds from which I cannot really ever separate myself into its productive consequence, not because productivity is important to me, but because consequence is inevitable to me. And I know that I have the option in my eternal beingness to be joyful eternally. And I like this opportunity in which to express my joy again. That's what you all said as you made the decision to come in. So it's about getting back to who we really are. In this state of being, it's often getting back to remembering that. So we started with you very delicately. We said, you are more than you know here. You are more than this magnificent physical vessel. You are so much more. You are more than you can see or hear. You are more than your physical senses exposed to you. You are so much more. And we began wanting you to get into touch with your emotional center, which would help you to understand the moreness because your emotional center causes you to understand that there's you focusing with your mind and that there's your source focusing with the mind of source, that there's you and your inner being and this inevitable eternal relationship between the two, which helps you to focus your energy, to continue being that while this life experience allows you and your inner being to then become more. And then we explain to you that you are like the pioneers out here willing to explore while your inner being stands in that non-physical knowing, not wavering in the energy of alignment, always aligned and rooting for you to be able to take that alignment into new places. That's why you came, to take the alignment of source into new places. And why? Why? Because it's fun. Because it feels good because it's satisfying, not because it needs to be done. It inevitably will be done. Not because it's broken the way it is, it's perfect the way it is and getting better. It's only from a vulnerable stance that humans try to get us to explain that they were meant to do something or that they were meant to be something. They're looking for some bigger meaning only when they're feeling the absence of that connection. 
tying it into what we were saying earlier. When you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on and having a brilliant, glorious time in the now, you're not so goal oriented. And you get goal oriented from your lackful place. When you feel not enough or like you need some greater recognition. But there is nothing more beneficial to you or to the world who sees you or who embraces you or who acknowledges you than your alignment to source and your flowing of it into the environment. There's, there just isn't anything more of value that you could do for yourself or for anyone. We want you to understand the simplicity of what being out of alignment is. I'm focused upon something in a way that the larger, wiser part of me isn't. It really is that simple. So if I don't like somebody and it feels awful, that means my inner being is really appreciating that person. If I'm mad at myself and feeling all guilty or ashamed or inept or incapable, then that awful feeling simply means that my inner being does not feel that way about me at all. That I'm out there on the raw and ragged edge. If I'm worried about future experience or present experience, if I'm worried about the global economy or my personal economy, that only means that my inner being knows that I've got it covered and that it's gonna be okay and that I'm off on this negative rampage unnecessarily. Your guidance system is always making the comparison or relationship for you of that bigger picture. We're appreciating this conversation because in light of everything that we've been talking about already here today, where do you feel like you are in relationship to where you want to be? Do you feel like you're there? Do you feel like you're not there? Or do you feel like you're on the way to there? I feel like I'm on the way. So is on the way to there as good as being there? It's a trick question, so be careful. <laughs> because we've just been saying how Esther and others have been really enjoying the manifestation. Esther says, Abraham, I know I'm supposed to like focus wheels and I'm supposed to like meditation and I sort of kind of do all, but I really like the manifestation. But you know, as we watch Esther, it's not the manifestation that she's liking. It's that sweet spot where the manifestation is beginning to take place. It's sort of like, you know, you got together with your family, you spread out a great big impossible to appreciate puzzle on the table. There's 5,000 and pieces people come and go they put pieces together in the puzzle most of the day it doesn't even look like anything you really can't find anything the little kids are doing a better job of finding the pieces than you are even though you're focusing really hard and then the puzzle is shaping up the puzzle is shaping up and then some smarter comes in and puts the last five pieces in the puzzle <laughs> and we say you do like that better don't you in other words, isn't there something sort of satisfying about doing that part? But didn't the other part have to come first? And so we want you to feel satisfaction in all parts of it, knowing that, of course, it's going to come together. It's going to come together. Whatever you want is going to come together. But the more you were enjoying it before it comes together, then the more you're getting the point about what it's all about. Because as soon as you get a manifestation, you're going to like it for just about the afternoon. <laughs> I really like having this, but now what? And those of you who are really feeling a lot of satisfaction have a whole lot of things that are coming into being. And more and more, aren't they converging one with another? Aren't you finding some central place within you that is sort of orchestrating the way things come together? And aren't you beginning to feel your power? Aren't you beginning to feel your value and your worthiness more and more and more? So do you know, do you understand Let's use that word. We like that word so much. Do you understand that you create your own reality? Is that all right with you? And do you understand that even though you are beautiful in your physical beingness, that you're beautiful to see and to touch and to hear and so forth, even though you are beautiful in your physical beingness, that you are much, 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 much more than that. And do you understand that the non-physical part of you, the soul part, the source part, the energy part, adores your physicality? That your soul or source likes the cellular nature of your being, enjoys when you eat, that the cells enjoy the nature of the nourishment that you provide, but that your inner being also likes 
the flavors that you are choosing. Can you sort of get that? Can you feel that much of your own personal enjoyment is because non-physical is focused with you and taking pleasure in this manifestation out here? Is that making some sense to you? Can you feel the value of thoughts turning to things? Does it make sense to you that this physical environment is the furthest extension of consciousness? Ah, that's a little tougher for you to say yes to, isn't it? Because it's a little bit of a difference in the way you have been looking at it. But use your logic just for a moment and think about the momentum that we've been talking about all day today. And think about thoughts turning to things and think about consciousness and think about creation. And therefore, isn't it logical in some way that manifestations or the translation of vibration into the further five senses is a bigger, bolder, more complete manifestation than the thought where it began? Isn't physical environment the leading edge of thought? And isn't it logical that what you want to call source what many call God, that what is at the core of you is also out here on the leading edge with you. Source is coming forward into the now, just like we are asking you to do. Can you feel that? Source isn't somehow separate from you back in non-physical while you are the pioneers out here on the leading edge. You couldn't be here without the resourcing of source. Everything that you've ever thought of that source was is right here in the now with you. Who? Don't you like knowing that? And don't you want to open yourself fully, not just to the recognizing of it, but of the realizing of it? Don't you want to feel the fullness of source eating your sandwich with you? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you want to relax enough to allow source who loves your body on a cellular level each and every one of those trillions of cells in your body don't you want to just relax and allow source to embrace and adore and compliment in every way every facet of your body don't you love being on the leading edge and don't you love knowing that source came all the way out to this leading edge with you and don't you like knowing that source has never one time departed from you or deviated from you or left you hanging out here to dry that in every case that you have felt pinched off you've been the pincher offer in every case it has been a thought that you have chosen that has held you in some sort of bogus resistance that has just for the moment disallowed you to know how source is feeling in the moment hasn't stopped source from feeling it hasn't stopped source from tasting your food or loving your body or your world or your environment or your neighbors it hasn't stopped source from feeling all of that it's just numbed you to your ability to recognize it all you can do is pinch yourself off from the resonating of what source is doing all the time you are love in physical bodies you are physically manifested love and intelligence and brilliance and worthiness you are magnificent beings in a perfect world here with all of those reasons that you've set forth and so many of them being satisfied on a moment-to-moment -moment basis there is so much love here for you and for now we are complete